Hey everyone, welcome to the first video for Harvest League. Also, it happens to be raining while I record this and I'm not waiting until it stops to put the video out. So if it comes up, I'm sorry. Anyways, on today's content, we're gonna be going over the league starter, the Cobra Lash Assassin, and some initial thoughts on Harvest itself. There are some things to cover on each topic, especially with the starter, which went through some changes in comparison to the original plan in Friday's video. The league itself, while having a smooth launch, is also a bit divisive so far and I do want to go over some things that I am finding a bit perplexing. As always, if you enjoyed the video and you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel, otherwise rating and a comment helps spread the content to the masses. So let's get this breath. Let's begin with the league starter. The leveling process was, to say the least, smooth. However, it wasn't as fast as I would have liked. However, I had no issues gearing and progressing through the campaign as I pretty much followed my own advice, getting the Morty Morsu, rushing towards dodge, getting poison and life here and there, acquiring the wasp nest and before I knew it I was mapping. So for the changes, I did some in the tree department, though they aren't huge. I decided to skip the chaos nodes that lead into atrophy. Instead, I'll be taking another jewel socket and taking nodes in the ranger starting area. Turns out that that has better poison DPS than the atrophy stuff. Besides that, the tree is pretty much identical to the one I showcased in Friday's video. The real changes, however, came in the gearing process. It was quite a mess to be quite honest. The original plan was to use such a Rubim's Maleficence and Elder influenced gloves with Chaos DOT and another poison mod. Taking those ideas into practice is a little bit of a stretch, and to that add the fact that I had been leaving off the Chaos recipe because my luck was pretty crap. Since the plan was having three frenzy charges at all times through a mod in the shield and jewelry crafts, I opted to ditch the Elder gloves and went with snake bites. As these unique gloves give you accuracy, attack speed, and damage over time bonuses when you have frenzy charges. However, when I decided to go that route, I also started theory crafting the possibility of running double curses. For this, I decided to use a body armor with the affix so you can apply an additional curse. So I traded for a body armor with the extra curse, got a pair of snake bites with temporal chains and the despair came from the witchfire brew. To synergize this further, I got an amulet that had the obscure 10% increased damage with hits and ailments per curse on enemy. The setup was kinda janky but it was also kinda working. But I quickly realized that I wanted a 6 link in the skill setup. I was running with a 5 link and wasted a hefty chunk of fuse orbs trying to get the extra curse chest linked. That did not happen, which was a shame as the double curse setup blew the original plan out of the water. It was around this time that I found and sold a pair of boots with the incursion mod 5% increased movement speed if you haven't been hit recently. And they also happened to roll a crap ton of life while having enough resists to warrant a 2 XL price. This boosting currency allowed me to ditch the entire double curse setup and just run a plain 6 link with life and resists, while also changing the temporal chains sneak bites to a pair with despair on hit alongside a chaos damage over time amulet instead of the wacky one that I was wearing. Besides that, I also opted to use a darkness enthroned, as this build got buffed in the patch and to be quite honest it is best in slot. With two nice rolls on the jewels, we are pretty much blowing all other options out of the water with relative ease. We may have to use darkness enthroned throne in every build this league. It is that good. Anyways, I'm missing 3 awakened gems, but considering that their prices are dropping rather quickly, those should be a possibility by the time the next video is out. I'm also lacking the Dirty Techniques Anointment, the Fizz's Extra Chaos on the Shield, and a GG Claw. Those will hopefully come soon. As for the skills, everything is the same as the last video, but I am lacking a Val, Blight, and a Herald of Agony in the loadout. However, I went with the recommendation from some of you guys and opted to use Plague better. I wasn't going to, but I figured why the hell not, considering it is pretty good for single target. Granted, you don't really want to stand near enemies nowadays, but thanks to the blind from the Witchfire Brew, we kinda get away with hugging monsters. With all of that said, the goal of this character is to kill the first Sirius. Anything beyond that may prove to be a little bit of a stretch. I think that should be enough for a league starter. So now, just a brief opinion on the league mechanics. And to be quite honest, I am a bit perplexed with this league. It sounded like a regular farming experience. But then it kinda became Factorio. It has been a rather interesting mechanic so far to try and figure out the most efficient way of managing the seeds, the dispensers, the collectors, storage tanks and pylons. As convoluted as it seems, there is some sense of accomplishment when everything works without having to fiddle further. I feel like I haven't been in 
engaging in the best of ways with the mechanic. My garden setup is a bit scuffed at the moment, but I have been able to pop tier 3 seeds here and there. But I must be honest, because I actually dislike the fact that most crafting recipes are useless because they are tied to monster level and item level. For example, I can't craft an Elder Claw that I got for the character with the Garden because I haven't gotten to tier 16 maps and I haven't gotten seeds that are level 83, as the Claw itself is item level 83. Yes, I understand that I can trade for those seeds, but the thing is, what do I do with the rest of the seeds that I have gotten so far? And since I don't really need anything else on my character for the time being, I haven't used most crafting recipes. Most of the time the monsters are just becoming used for the storage tanks rather than fuel for the recipes. However, I have been crafting two-ton boots here and there whenever I remember, hoping for some GG stuff to trade away. But besides the crafting of the two-ton boots here and there, I really haven't gotten anything else that makes me go, holy shit, this is overpowered. There are some cool things like the 36 link or the gem experience storage things. Some things like the targeted annulments or exalts were appearing during the leveling, but since I hit maps, I haven't seen any of these. Granted, my current character doesn't depend on my own crafts. Most of the gear was cheap to acquire, but the most important thing I should be chasing right now is a strong poison focused claw, to which I think I'll have better crafting luck using fossils than the garden. Another thing that I actually find a bit annoying is that most garden encounters seem to be ending with monsters dropping some sort of undead effect, exploding seeds or poison ground or burning ground. Thankfully my character doesn't suffer too much at these predicaments because he is ranged, but I don't really like the fact that again we're dealing with unnecessary death effects. Having said all of that, I don't hate Harvest, at least not yet. I think it's a nice change of pace in contrast with Delirium, but I'm still hoping that it's going to get better as I progress deeper into the Atlas, because the early and medium mapping seed experiences leave a lot to be desired. If you got to this point in the video, I'd like to hear your thoughts, as the little talk that I've seen so far from the community seems to be rather conflictive. Anyways, I wanna thank you for watching the video and remember to sub if you haven't done so already. Otherwise, a rating and a comment help getting the content spread out to the masses. Take care, have a nice rest of your week and peace out.